this is an overview of historical events and why is it why why is it important in in in, in the context of revelation 9 1 to 12 it's to understand the fifth plague from a spiritual viewpoint that's why we're talking about this and so you're gonna say whoa so he's telling us that the whole western apostasy is is a part of this fifth plague and it's and well absolutely it's not outside of history not it's not it's not something that's going to come one day we're living the fifth plague like we've been living it for decades and centuries the fifth plague in this sense of heresy in james 4 1 2 which is is i'll read that first and then we'll read uh, why it's applicable uh, here. What causes wars? What causes fighting among you? He says, is it not your passions that are at war in your members? You desire and do not have, so you kill. And you covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and wage war. You do not have because you do not ask. And he goes on, read James chapter four for more. You know, just before we go on, secularism, what is secularism? What is worldliness? What is what is it in one word? It's the passions. It's all the world is all the passions together. That's what the world is. When you think of worldliness or the world in a pejorative sense, not in God's creation, but in a spiritual sense, what is it? All the passions living for and in for and in the passions. Right. So that's why he says, is it not your passions that are a war in your members like giving into your passions and allowing your passions to war against your soul your mind your your own best interest your salvation enslaving yourself to your passions that is the cause of the wars and the infighting and all the rest so now elder athanasius says well, okay what's this, how does this work here atheism generated atheistic socialist systems right marxism uh, uh capitalism right these are also uh atheistic systems ultimately uh, they're not born out of the, the church the church doesn't teach and preach capitalism that's not a christian gospel right let's not be deluded because we're in the capitalist west and we think it's great no it did not it was not born it is an ism and it is out of a secularism and an apostasy just like the other systems all right but so the atheistic social systems with the end result being the full verification of the words of saint james the brother of the lord right this is what is the fruit of what he's talking about in James 4, 1 to 2. It ends up bringing about atheism. He's speaking about hedonism. Hedonism gives birth to atheism, of course. The, see the seeking of pleasure above all else, my self-interest, the individual first and foremost and last and above all else, right? My will, my desires. Isn't that the vast majority of people in the world today? Don't we? Isn't that almost the gospel? You know, do what you need to do. Hey, at the end of the day, it's 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 uh, it's a uh, animal, you know, uh, animalistic existence here. Dog eat dog, right? Get ahead. Nobody's going to look out for you. You do what you got to do to get ahead, right? Isn't that the isn't that the mentality? And that where does that come from? A total loss, a loss of experience and trust in God. That's that that is atheism, right? Atheism is a loss. And a belief and an experience of a God who is uh, who is providentially caring for you every step of the way. If you can't trust, it's because you don't know deeply the fa Father of all humanity, the Savior of all humanity, the Redeemer of all humanity. Right. So it's all connected. When you see a, 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 the seeking of pleasure above all else, me first above all else, this hedonism. It's what we choose, right? He, what is this? It's what what we choose, what we want. It's my will above all else, right? What we choose to eat, in what we want to drink, in what we want to hear, in what we wish to see, in what how we wish to enjoy ourselves. And you can go on and on and on. That egotism is, and that hedonism, which comes from that egotism eventually, right, is what uh, is is Saint James talking about? And of course, that's the that's the uh, the environment in which atheism is birthed, and that comes about because of the apostasy of Christians from Christ. So that, that wouldn't happen if there was an ascetic ethos and examples like there was throughout church history, amazing examples that brought people back again and again to the cross as as the only way to be free and to be uh, 
to be secure ultimately uh without that then we we we, we devolve back to the kind of hedonism and paganism and the dog eat dog world that we live in today right so let's look now at another aspect of this uh spread of uh heresies throughout the world the spread of the fifth plague and an analysis of the european colonization of millions upon millions of people around the world right this is a spiritual analysis this is a really really important and interesting and by the way if you're interested in this i actually have a little book on this topic we're going to talk about the the 20th and 19th century uh, explosion of mission by the protestant uh, uh mainly protestant uh, sectarians around the world which was unprecedented all in terms of just size and scope right and yet it was closely connected to colonization he says millions of people sigh and grumble under the heavy yoke of colonist europe when the missionaries of europe this is what this whole book is about right here. You can get it from Uncle Mountain Press. Missionary origins of modern ecumenism. It's all connected to the apostasy of our day. It birthed modern ecumenism. And listen to what he's talking about now. This is very important to understand the modern world. How did we get to a globalization? How do we get to a global culture, a one world society and culture? It was because of the colonists and the missionaries who went and taught and preached and taught among all the natives around the world, the English language and the Western culture and brought them into the sphere of the Western influence, uh, which was which was the aim of the colonists, right? To use religion as a, as a tool to control the masses. When the missionaries of Europe went to spread the gospel, would they have been accepted like those genuine missionaries who did not display such pretenses? In other words, he's saying they failed because they were not genuine apostolic missionaries of days ago and in the Orthodox Church what we see up to this day we don't we we see a general rejection among the third world of uh true christianity right a distortion and perversion over the last 200 years since they were uh, accepting of course there are exceptions of course there are exceptions of course there are probably many more exceptions among uh the poor uh, uh, of the third third world so-called third world than the first world because here we have gross materialism and uh, the humility and, and poverty is, lends itself to the gospel of Jesus Christ in whatever form they hear it. But for truly behind their missionary Christian activity was an agenda of real estate possession through colonization. We have to be honest. This is what happened. This is not a woke academic from New York talking. This is Elder Athanasio de Nero saying that's what is reality. Colonization did this, right? Didn't bring about the Christianization of the world which is precisely why there were adverse re reactions to these missionaries. The end result of a cosmopolitan secularized Christianity, a Christianity used as bait for the hook of selfish material interest and hedonistic pursuits is atheism. Global atheism grew up again from the West. It spread through the West. Where are all the atheist centers in the world? It's in Europe, UK, America, right? The heart of Western Christianity, Europe, UK, America, the various European Protestant and, and Papal Protestant uh, uh, societies, they gave birth to atheism and they spread it around the world because that's the end result of a secularized Christianity. It's atheism. It's rejection of Christ. Again, he Nietzsche was basically just telling you what was going on at the time. I mean, he was also a prophet and he was deluded. But he said a truth when he said God is dead. What does that mean? God is dead in the hearts and the lives of the people of Europe already from the late 19th century. Going on with Elder Athanasius, everything happened the way it did because Europe desired to live lavishly and materialistically. Europe did not have the Christian frame of mind necessary for bringing the message of the gospel to Africa, America, and the Far East. And, you know, if you go to St. Eustin Popovich, you go to St. Nikolai Vilimrovich, you have the same message. This is the consensus of the contemporary saints of our day. This is really not surprising, but it's very powerful coming from Elder Athanasius. And he goes on. What about the French Revolution as an example, right? All the revolutions really could be incorporated, but the French is the most 
impactive and most destructive. It was the end result of the apostasy of papal and reformed Protestantism. Far from being a seen, and that's how it's seen in the West, as simply a like foreign element that crept up and and warred against the church. It's born and bred within the fabric and the and the and the soil of Western uh, papal and Protestant Christianity. The French Revolution in 1789 has as its main uh, agenda to introduce new initiatives <clears throat> towards organized materialistic and atheistic social systems. Although it declared liberty, equality, and fraternity, these declarations were made in the absence of God. And the end result is all of Europe is governed by the standards of the French Revolution, the consequences of which have become catastrophic. Of course, we know now that the French Revolution was largely carried out by those in the Masonic and uh, Illuminati orders, and it was not at all, uh, it was very well planned, it was very destructive and intentionally so, uh, and the aim was to begin the destruction of all the Christian monarchy and clearly a demonically inspired uh, movement. And these are the same people who are ruling the elite today. Nothing, it's only gotten worse and worse over the last 250 years. For he goes on, throughout Europe today, there is no liberty, no equality, and no fraternity, but anarchy, rebellion, ethical deterioration, and the escalation of crime. This was said 40 years ago, how much more today? The Western world, through Western Christianity has reached these dead ends because it started out on the wrong foot. The Europe of, not of orthodoxy, not of Christianity, but of Charlemagne is what was born. It was the Frankish uh, the sons and daughters of Charlemagne in that Europe, the so-called Holy Roman Empire, which was neither holy nor Roman nor an empire, is what we see the fruits of today, right? That's that's the wrong foot he's talking about. That's the soil in which the apostasy and the ultimately the spirit of Antichrist who's coming to rule the world grows out of. It's from there. It's not from the Christian gospel. It's not from the Orthodox uh, Romanity of the Roman Empire. It's not from the missionaries sent from Constantinople, right? This is not foreign to the very heresy. It is the plague of heresy. It's the fruit of the plague of heresy and the consequences of heresy. And, and this is what all good-willed, serious, pious Orthodox, uh, Roman Catholics and Protestants, Roman Catholics and Protestants need to come to terms with. It's not the Vatican II. It didn't happen 40 years ago. It didn't happen 300 years ago. It happened from the beginning with the apostasy of the Frankish Pope and the abandonment of the Orthodox faith. This is the beginning of what we're now living, right? It's a long process to bring about the scent of Antichrist. Perhaps now, he says, Perhaps now you may understand. Listen to this. Look at this in blue. I got it in blue so you pay special attention. All this evil originated in the Roman church. Now, I, I want to correct that. That's how it's commonly referred to, but it's properly referred to as not the Roman church because the Roman Orthodox Church in Rome was the faithful church to the creed, the symbol of faith, the ecumenical councils that all happened in the Roman Empire and the Roman emperor, right? But in fact, what you have is a usurping and a taking over of Rome by the Franks. So it would properly be said something like, you could call it the Frankish church or the heretical Latin Frankish church because she did not maintain the truth of the gospel. And it is precisely why the Pope has been characterized as an antichrist. And that's not just by crazy fundamentalist Protestants, I don't know where, but it's by serious people like Elder Athanasius and St. Eustine Popovich, who said famously, famously, there were three great falls in the history of mankind, Adam, Judas, and the Pope. And this is why. This is the consensus, brothers and sisters, of contemporary saints in our day, and not, of course, unfortunately, our uh, wayward academic and secularized theologians uh, in Western academia among the Orthodox who are going the way of the apostate West, unfortunately. May God cease that process and bring them back to patristic orthodoxy. And going on here, the adulteration of the gospel has led to the Western lifestyle, the Western way of life, right? Of fear, 
insecurity and psychological frailty. This is not just an accident, right? This is a way of life that leads to this total disintegration of the human person, right? History has left humanity in today's reality, right? You have to understand history. If you want to understand why we are what we are today, what's going on today, you've got to know history. And not just the last hundred years, the last thousand years at least, right? At least the last thousand years. You've got to understand history. History has left humanity in today's reality the way we know life to be today, right? The adulteration of the gospel in the Christian West, which led to the Renaissance, to revolutions, to colonialism, has in fact led humanity to feelings of insecurity and psychological frailties, to fear COVIDism, the whole fear that grappled, grappled, grappled the whole world, gripped the whole world, right? The fear and the threat of a nuclear war, or just, just today, right? The Russian, uh, head of the Russian state, Vladimir Putin, uh, walked away from the uh, treaties, and of course, why did he do that? Because he's threatened by the West, right? We have a threat again of nuclear war, probably worse than ever today. Threat of nuclear war and to all by the, to all uh, the byproducts of what is known as Western civilization or the Western lifestyle. Now, this we're going to talk about civilization momentarily. Very interesting commentary. Another 15 slides. We're going to get into the question of civilization. What is civilization? Where does it come from? You're going to be blown away by how deep it goes and how it is it is actually not what you think. It's not what you think. So uh, let's go on to look at, again, other aspects of this plague before we get into the demonic element, which is the next section. Western insecurity and torment is the image of the fifth plague, right? This, what we see in, all around the world now because Western culture has unfortunately spread all around the world and because of technology and the advance of science and all this, they spread it all around the world on the heels of colonialism. And so we say Western insecurity and torment, but it's really global. It's really global. It's affecting all kinds of people insofar as they acquiesce and they abandon the traditional way of life and, the, and especially the Orthodox Christian way of life. They embrace insecurity and they are, they are tormented by the various aspects of modern life. And he says, the reality that the Western lifestyle is an insecure one becomes obvious as we now see Europeans, Americans too, turning to Eastern mystics, Buddhists, the gurus of Hinduism, the Dalai Lamas, right? Western men's running to the supposed bliss of the West, of the East, the Far East. These gurus and mystics exclaim, you pitiful Europeans ought to relax. You have so many fears. Sit down in the morning and meditate for an hour or two. Loosen up. Release your energy. Do some yoga, right? He didn't say that, but that's what we see all the time. That's why it's so deluded that Orthodox Christians are running to yoga. Please wake up. Flee the Eastern mystic and Eastern pagan religions practices. Flee them. If you, you have no understanding of the roots of these things, please flee them. This is not the orthodox way, right? He goes on, this sudden need for relaxation exists because the man of the West finds himself in a vicious cycle of mental anguish. A lifestyle full of stress, psychosomatic illnesses, feel, feelings of insecurity, the constant fear of nuclear war, and the fact that we live with all of these evils. Of course, you're going to be insecure, fearful. Right, because of everything that's been created by this civilization, so-called, which is demonic, the demonic element has, lived, has entered in through all of this heretical theory and understanding and experience of uh, and, and, and theorization of God. Ultimately, that's once you walk away from the Orthodox faith, confession of faith, the, that that which was once delivered. And can never be built on and innovated and developed, right? Once you walk away from that, it's a matter of time until you reach atheism. It's it's a it's a beginning of the end. It's a disintegration because you walk away from the truth and the, co the confession of the gospel. You walk away from the Holy Spirit. You walk away from the experience that goes along with that confession of faith. And it's a matter of time until you birth atheism. And this is what this is what we're talking about. It goes way back, folks. You got to go way back to understand what what how did we arrive 
where we arrive today. We could say, he goes on, that the entire description of the plague beginning with the fifth trumpet call, trip, uh, I'm sorry, fifth trumpet call presents a rather good picture of our contemporary reality. Let me say that again. The entire description of the fifth of the plague beginning with the fifth trumpet call, it describes our contemporary reality because of the spiritual reality of, of the reign of heresy, right? Wherein people are tormented by the very things that they themselves invented. Human beings invented all of this, right? This modern technology, this modern way of life, nuclear uh, uh, potential, all of this. And it's tormenting us, of course, because the use of it is so distorted, right? Because the understanding of the person has been distorted because the understanding of God has been distorted. It's all connected.